How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays, 6 p.m. East with me. That was for Lance. That was for my buddy Lance, because I get yelled at every week when I say East. Guys, a lot to talk about today. Obviously, Crown Jewel. My gosh. Listen, I am I am I a Logan Paul fan? Not really. Am I a Jake Paul fan? Not really. They don't appeal to me. They're not my demo. I'm a little older. But holy moly, you got to give credit when credit's due. The, the, this guy. I, I, it's third match. I, I don't think we've ever seen anybody that is a non-wrestler come and have three matches at the level he's had. And his third match being a main event with, a, with Roman Reigns or a type like Roman Reigns and put on the performance that he put on. I, I want to take time and talk about that a little bit today because, you know, for all the negativity that he brings to himself, I, I think... If you're a pro wrestling fan, you you genuinely appreciate his performance from yesterday, last night. Something I never thought I would I would see. Uh, two things I never thought I would see, and that's Jeff Jarrett in AEW. Tack Darby Allen hit him in the head with a guitar. Obviously, there was a fake sting also involved. Very Jarrett-like. We're going to talk about that. And the other, uh, I did not have this on my prediction list. I should, I should have had it on my prediction list because all the crazy stuff has happened this year. Shibata wrestled on Rampage while Mike Tyson was on commentary. I want to spend some time and talk about this because <laughs> it's, what, what, I wonder what the rating is going to be with Tyson on commentary, right? Fascinating stuff. WWE earnings call, another blockbuster quarter for them. A lot to unpack from that earnings call, obviously. And of course, Joel Pearl, my buddy. From Fightful joining me here on the show. Very, very excited to have Joel on. Very excited to talk to him about all this stuff. Guys, you know, it's pro wrestling. It's crazy. It's always nuts. It's always crazy. But we're going to break and we're going to talk about all of this. Wrestling Observer Live. When we get back, Joel Pearl joining me here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition with me, Andrew Zarian. Of course, joined by my good buddy, Joel Pearl from Fightful. How you doing, Joel? Oh, baby. Andrew Zarian, I'm doing great. How are you doing? You know, I, I purposely butcher your name on all the other shows that we do, right? I'm like Jordan Pearl, Burl Merle. I, ca I can't say Joel Pearl anymore. It, it's so difficult for me to say because I haven't called you that on the air in God knows how long. That's fine. Nobody calls me Joel Pearl properly. People do, like I, I'm Joe Pearl. I'm Joel. I'm that guy from Fightful that I've never seen before. That like, guy from I'm, Fightful. Who's that dude? Yeah. Yeah. That guy from Fightful. Well, you did a great interview with Wardlow uh, recently, which a lot of people should Thank check you. out. It was a really fun interview. I very much enjoyed it. So let's go into Crown Jewel. I, I promise I'm not going to spend the entire show on this. People in the chat are like, is Andrew going to talk about WWE for an hour? No, no, no. I at least have to talk about Mike Tyson calling an STO. I have to. So you'll get maybe like 58 minutes, all right? Uh, you know, fascin these shows are weird to me, and I'll tell you why. Watching wrestling at noon on the East Coast here, you know, I, I absolutely love it, right? I absolutely love watching earlier shows. It, it, my day is not ruined. You know, my night, I still have my evening. So I tend to enjoy these shows. Did you enjoy the show? So yes and no. Uh, it ran almost four hours, right? We did about three hours and 40 minutes on an afternoon show. That's normally really good. Um, I think most people know who, who follow me and, and, and know about me. Um, I have a newborn, I have a seven month old. And so some weeks it's super difficult to like watch it live. If I'm on childcare duty, uh, we try not to, you know, put him in front of a screen and all that. But otherwise, when I went back and watched the rest of the show, if I watch in segments, not so bad. Um, there were parts of the show that were amazing and there were parts of the show that were absolutely not that. So uh, there's plenty to talk about. That's for sure. Yeah, it was, it was a fine show. It opened up with Brock Lesnar, uh, essentially being ragdolled by Bobby Lashley for about eight minutes. Brock Lesnar won when he had, what was it? He had a rear naked on, uh, the, 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 oh oh, my the, God, the, the, thing, the master yeah. lock. <laughs> yeah. The master lock. Yeah. The master, he had the master lock on and, Brock Lesnar is the only one that knows how to get out of that. And it's, it's throw your body as hard as you can on behind and, and get a pin. So 
Very interesting. I, I thought they did an interesting job here, and it seems like this is going to continue. I don't know where it's going to go. This was planned for day one. Since that show's not happening, do they continue it now, or do they wait till February? I don't know, but I was curious to see the finish of this, because it was not your typical Brock Lesnar finish. Very interesting. Damage Control, Io Sky and Dakota Kai defeated Alexa Bliss and Asuka to win the Women's Championship. You know, they they teased an Alexa moment with the screen here where Bray's logo flashed and she was mesmerized by the by that bug. Which do, do you want to see her go back to that weird spooky thing or So they keep showing the Lily doll and yes. when they won the tag titles on Raw, I, I had tweeted out very jokingly, this is an opportunity, a merchandising opportunity. You bring back the Lily doll, you put a little bit, a little a little mini women's tag title around it, and then you can sell it and make gangbusters on it. Because when we went to SummerSlam, I've talked about this before, those Lily dolls were sold out. In an instant. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot we were at SummerSlam together. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. So what you do is you put it, you put one of those mini titles, bundle it with the Lily doll, and you could have sold it, and people That's would have it. been like, "Oh, she got a new hat," and that would have been good enough. <laughs> you know, Instead, I, they changed the titles back. This match was okay. I, I I was kind of in and out on this. I was I was very curious about the following match, and that was Drew McIntyre and Karrion Cross. This was a, it was more of a story for Karrion than it was for Drew. Karrion has been a little cold. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting because he was such a fascinating act in NXT. And they brought him up and they gave him that ridiculous get, uh, outfit for like two weeks. He's out the door and now he comes back and people were very hyped to see what they do. And something is off here. And I don't know what it is. Is it the hair, Joel? Oh, God, no. The hair is perfect. The hair Keep is the perfect. Hair. Yeah, he has the great hair. hair but but I mean, great. what do you think it is? Why do you think like I I. Actually, personally, I like Carrion as a wrestler. I like the persona. I think I like the act. It just, it's not getting the response I thought it would. It's a little too cartoony. And I think because of that, people have a hard time connecting and finding something to, to buy into when it comes to Cross. Uh, him working with Scarlet is great. I mean, that package should be together because in real life they are together. So there's, there's, there's something there. Um, but also her character is a bit cartoony. She's kind of witchy and she sings yeah. the theme song on the way to the ring. There's something, there's just that connectivity that's missing. You look at Drew McIntyre, people connect to Drew. Sometimes he's a little hokey. Yeah. But he connects on you because he has that little, that person ability for a guy who's six, six and you know, Greek, god statuesque physique yeah but something, sure. something, something likable about him cross doesn't have that or at least we haven't seen it yet yeah uh the match ended with a weird finish where drew decided to climb the cage and scarlet opened the cage for carrying and carrying just couldn't make it and, and drew made it out so they're going to continue this i don't know where they're going to go with this but this was cross's first match and he lost you know where you put it where do you put it? You, you, you put Scarlet in the shark cage and you hoist her above the ring. M Mattel's going to love that. That's right there up Mattel's go. alley. So this this next match was Michael Cole was shining in this match. He got to say Bullet Club multiple times. He called, he, he said Doc Gallows, Doc and Machine Gun, he called them. He referred to Carl Anderson having the never op never open weight championship. He does have never yep. never yeah never open weight champ. I, for whatever reason, my brain just paused at the name. Uh, he's a never open weight champion. They address that. Uh, they brought up again the Bullet Club, the 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 origin story of it. I very much like this match. Uh, I I thought it was cool that Michael Cole was able to, you know, it popped me. And at the end of the day, that little tiny thing that Michael Cole did made a difference for me and i thought i thought it added to the story here not only did it add to the story um they also uh, they also mentioned that doc gallows is a former iwgp tag team champion yes they did yeah so yeah there's something there again there's a little bit of synergy there with new japan pro wrestling and wwe i'm all for it why not uh the match itself yeah it was fine uh calling calling dominic mysterio dominic guerrero absolutely popped me fantastic they're, yeah they're doing something with Rhea though and i'm looking forward to that because she well, is the leader of that faction 100 she is and 
And, you know, Rhea, Rhea tweeted that she was doing her Beth Phoenix look. So uh, th maybe that's the other person for the other side. Give it to me. The All day. Yeah, Give man, me. I'm into it, too. I'm, I totally am into it. Uh, very, very interesting stuff. But, but I do the story that poor little Dominic was so impressionable by this, by this goth, you know, bad girl. That has corrupted Dominic and he whispers these terrible things. You know, I, I, I'm thinking like, can you imagine? Like, I would love for, her, for him to bring her to the house for like dinner. If this was like five, six years ago and Vince was writing this, there would definitely be like a dinner moment where like the Mysterios are hosting Rhea, this like goth Rhea in the house and it becomes a whole melee in the house. My question is, how do the Mysterios feel that their kids keep bringing home these Australian wrestlers? <laughs> yes. That's awkward. <laughs> Listen, maybe they got a type. I don't know. Maybe they they, they got something there. Uh, the Us, uh, Braun Strowman defeated Omos. I did not care at all about this match. They told us over and over again that this is supposed to be like Big John Stud and Andre the Giant. No, nope. I mean this was said on the pre-show by by Peter Rosenberg. This was said on the show. This was said on on Twitter. It wasn't. I, I you know it what did it nothing for me. But you know what it was? It, what? Both men looked good coming out of this. They did. Omos yeah, they both looked good. The, he had the best match he ever had. Braun Strowman won the match, so that works. Uh, it just it, it was sticky, giant wrestling. And some people really enjoyed that. Didn't love it myself, but whatever. You get what you get, and that was the best match. Guys, we're going to go to a quick break. When we get back, we're going to finish up on Crown Jewel and talk about everything else happening in the world of professional wrestling. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here, Sunday edition. With one of my good friends, Joel Pearl. Up in Toronto. Stop. See, I said Hello. it right. I said it correctly. It's not Toronto. It's Toronto. Toronto. Or if you Toronto. really want to get uh, into it, Toronto. Toronto. I worked at The Gap. Okay. I worked at The Gap, 1999. And we had one of our managers. She was from Canada. And she corrected all of us and taught us how to say Toronto properly. So I, I take pride in, in learning from a, a, another Canadian. Just just say the T. It's fine. You can call it Toronto. If I you will want. never say the T, Joel. Don't ever make Whatever. me do that. Whatever. I grew up in Ottawa. You think people really know how to pronounce that <laughs> one so easily when they see it? Whatever. The Usos defeated the Brawling Brutes to retain the... You know, the undisputed WWE Tag Team titles. Uh, what did you think of this? Uh, it's fine. Listen, match was good. I, honestly, Brawling Brutes have no business being as good as they are as a tag team. They're great. Well, like, they're yeah. really good. R Ridge has over uh, overperformed, and having a guy like uh, like Butch, like Pete Dunne in his corner, working with them is so great. You know uh, what the problem is, though? Elevate everybody. The problem yeah. is, when you look at Butch, you know, you know, like I look at him, I'm like, okay, that's Pete Dunne. Okay, he's a little menacing, but Rich Holland, like I sometimes like I see like like I look up and I'm like, who is that? I have to think about it. who is that for a second, and I'm like, oh, it's Rich Holland. Oh, it's Luke. It's just how it's I think Luke. of it. It's, just, it's Luke. It's Luke. It's, it's Luke. <laughs> uh, I thought this was a good match. I enjoyed this. The Usos are unbelievable. Uh, you know, they've really transcended into uh, one of the best tag team acts that this company has ever had at this point. Uh, I think it's fair to say that they've evolved with the times, you know, when, when, uh, you know, they, they very different team, very different move set. Now they're not as high flying as they were or whatever they were, they were considered right. Medium flying, right. Cause they were never doing like acai moon salts and everything, but they were, they were like, uh, what, what would you consider their style? The early, I mean, early were, shows, not now. It, they were Samoan party boys. They were Samoan party boys. <laughs> Thank That's you. just what they were. They, they hopped off the top rope. Yeah. And yeah. the splash was the finish. And they painted half of their face and did the haka dance. And that was yeah. good enough. Samoan party boys. And now they're not. They're not so much that. Now they're now they're tough dudes. So it works mm -hmm. out. I thought this was fun. Now, the next match, you know, this was really polarizing. Bianca Belair defeated Bailey to retain the Raw Women's Championship. They gave this some time. It was a false count anywhere, right? Yep. Uh, it was last woman standing. Uh, last woman standing. I'm so sorry. Last woman standing. I here's my issue with this. I thought them wrestling was great. Those two together works. 
I, I, I think the problem for me with a last man standing or a last woman standing is there's so much stop and go. So yeah. much stop and go. Bailey took a couple bad moves. It was that that was that ladder spot that I, I mean I I went ooh a little bit <laughs> when she because of her knee problem, but you know, she seems to be fine. I thought she worked super hard in this. Bianca looked great in this. Um if this was not a last woman standing match, I think I would have enjoyed it more. So they had a little bit of a a, a challenge here. They couldn't brawl into the crowd because mm -hmm. it would have it, it wouldn't have worked. Let's just leave it at that with that crowd. Instead, I think they, they should have. Uh, I no. think they should have kept everybody on their toes in that crowd. No. I think I, you know, I, at least they weren't what? moving couches this time. Remember that <laughs> when they were just moving couches back and forth. But one thing they did do a few years ago was pelt the women with water bottles as they walked down the damn ramp. Yeah. So the fact that they didn't do it this time, you know, I'm not going to be like, oh, it's progress. Amazing. But my point it's is progress. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Regardless, if they had gone into the crowd, I think you would have ran into some some well, other issues. The point is they had to figure out how to make the match work without going into the crowd and doing the stuff on the stage to me was probably the best way to go about it. You know, in 2022, it's amazing, right? The progress that we've made where they they no longer you know they have to be covered head to toe right they they got they got the 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 whole outfit is covered and then not that's not good enough you need to wear the whole oversized t-shirt on top of it as well oh that's over because they don't do that anymore forbid for god forbid you see any kind of curves on anybody <laughs> I, i'm not gonna go into it but i you know they put on a great match yeah. And the crowd was into it. They 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 did enjoy it. They got into it. It was very young though that crowd. It was a <laughs> lot of kids, which was good to see, which was positive to see. You know, you saw that it was a younger crowd, and that's really I take all the politics aside. You know, those kids are you know that they're enjoying the product, and and that's um, unbelievable that they they're exposed to this now. I thought this was a fine match, very much so. Next, we got a Bray Wyatt promo. It was what it was. I don't know what I, how I feel about the Bray Wyatt stuff at this point. I think we need we need to speed it up just a little bit. Who the hell is Uncle Howdy? Do you want to know who Uncle Howdy is? Are you going to tell me it's it's, it's Bray or are you going to tell me it's it's yeah Bo? it's Bray in a damn skin mask. It's it Bray ain't that damn difficult, skin. folks. Yeah. I did this on a show earlier today, so I'm not going to go too deep into this. But this whole Wyatt Six thing that people are are you know saying it's it's different wrestlers playing his old characters. If we're okay with that, but for some reason we're not okay with Impact Dead Undead Realm or Wrestle House, for example, sure. what are we doing? What are, like, we, what doing? are we doing? Just let him. He, it's a manifestation of his of himself. So what's it going to be? Is it going to be the wrestlers, or is it going to be a manifestation of itself of himself? And he's fighting himself. He's currently fighting himself. So he, he's is. feuding with with all his alternate personalities. It's like a what was that movie? Um, the character from Glass. You lost me. <laughs> oh, man. Someone's going to know. Someone will be able I'm to sure. tell me. I forgot the name of the movie where he has like all the different personalities. Someone in the chat will tell me. Multiplicity. It's not multiplicity. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> that I can tell you it is not. Split. Th thank you so much in the chat. Split. Okay, everybody. Split. Everybody just writes split now. So everybody's right. It's a communal effort here, guys. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm curious to see who he feuds with, who his first matches with, what they do with this. You know, I, okay, he's back. I think it's cool. I think it helped. The white rabbit stuff was awesome. I, I very much liked it. Uh, where do you go from here? You know where I'm going yeah. from here? I'm going to tell you Roman Reigns, Logan Paul, undisputed WWE universal championship. It's fair to say, and I don't think anybody will deny this. Logan Paul over delivered once again. This guy, listen, he's not my, I'm not into his content. I don't listen to Jake. I have a lot of mutual friends with Jake. Fascinatingly enough. I, I, it's not my deal. I don't get it. It doesn't click with me and that's fine. I don't have to, but I will say there is no denying that if Logan Paul decided to become a professional wrestler full time, he would be world champion probably within six months. This yeah. company would put the title on him. 
not because of celebrityhood. Only, I mean, obviously that helps, but holy moly, this guy is a decent, I mean, far above a decent wrestler. Third match. Listen, you could say all that he does. He's he's training with Shawn Michaels. He's probably training where you know personally wherever he lives. There's no amount of training you could do that'll give you the real world experience. And this guy is so confident and solidified in himself that I'm blown away by it. Money, resources, and opportunity. Sure. And. He has that. And there's athleticism there. He's absolutely He's a natural an athlete. Both brothers, both uh, Logan yeah. Logan and, and Jake. Uh, I mean, natural, yeah. natural athletes. Logan Paul, obviously, he wrestled. He was a decent wrestler. Um, you could see by his takedowns that he was doing on, on Roman that, you know, a lot of it was he, him reverting back to traditional wrestling, real wrestling. I'm not going to say real wrestling. That's an insult. I'm not going to say that. Uh, amateur wrestling. Olympic style wrestling. But... I, I mean, listen, I, I I don't, I'm taking the whole persona out. I was so impressed by watching him in this match and the things that he was doing, the way he was selling, the way he was moving, you know, just the fundamentals. He gets it. I, yeah. I for a split second, Joel, like two seconds. I thought he was going to, I'm like, oh my gosh, are they going to do it? Because I got a message. Well, obviously, it's like, you know, I'm in my, you're the same way. You have your group chats and everybody's tweeting each other, messaging each other. And I, I, I don't know. I think it was MG, MG, our producer, Matt, in the production chat for the show. And he goes, oh, my God, Logan. And I, and I looked up and I'm like, maybe he's ahead of me on the stream. He won the title. And just at that moment, he goes for the pin. And it was like the deepest two and a half. I was like, oh, my gosh. I thought for a second he could win it. Obviously, he didn't. I think it was the right oh, decision that he didn't. But what would you give this match? What would you give his performance? His performance, I can give it probably a solid four out of five. Okay? That I will do. Um, the match itself, I, I can't rate this match because to me, the, the outcome was never in doubt. It was very well worked. But at the same time, so I... I kind of compare this to an old NXT takeover match in that both wrestlers had months to lay it out. When NXT was on the WWE network, they would spend they they would do one night and tape weeks of television in advance because the takeover was coming up, so the wrestlers already knew who they were working against, so they had full time in the PC to get those matches down packed and really overperform. And that was great. That's what Logan Paul had the opportunity to do with Roman, and that's what he did. So I can't I, I'm not going to give you anything else on that. Yeah. Wrestling Observer Live will be right back after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here. Sunday edition of the show, joined by my good friend Joel Pearl from Fightful. Joel, I, I think you need to just ferment that beard. But I'm going to tell you, get rid of the glasses. Do like a little okay. pomp on the hair, right? Like push it up a little. Go oh, yeah. jet black on the beard. Okay. Uh -huh. And wear really tight t-shirts. Mm, okay. Um, no. And and when you and wear a button down, never button the buttons. This is starting to sound vaguely familiar, and I cannot put my finger on why <laughs> or where. Listen, I I don't know. I I just feel like that's a good look for you. Uh, obviously, we were talking about Jake Paul and and his match with Roman Reigns. Roman defeated him. Uh, very uh over delivered, like we said. Let's go into something I found super interesting, and that's. Mike Tyson on Rampage. I watched this live. And, and I got to tell you, I've been watching more Rampage now because of the fact that they've been more of a lively show. I think I think being live has changed that, that show a little bit. I don't know. Do you think the tempo has changed or do you think it's just mental? It's like I, I, I'm psychologically preparing myself that this is something different because it's live. I think it's a little bit mental. There are it some probably weeks is. where... Yeah, there are some weeks where I'm like, okay, yeah, cool, it's live. I also don't know what happened because there are no spoilers to have been read. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it, it, there's a little more intrigue, but it's not super different. They're, they're, they're almost trying to go back to that original Rampage uh, way of, of going, which was the Saturday night's main event format. Main event and, first and then everything else second, yeah. Yeah, exactly. They, they tried to go back to that. It, 
at least this week they did, but it's still kind of just rampage. They haven't given me a reason to invest beyond that. Well, I was invested because Shibata and Orange Cassidy had a match. Shibata has not really had a wrestling match. I mean, he did the thing in Japan where it was supposed, well, it was supposed to be an exhibition and he ended up turning it exhibition. into Yeah, and he turned it into a wrestling match. Uh, but this, you know, he did a comedy style. You could see he was thrilled to be there. He did orange he did an Orange Cassidy match. And he lost clean to Orange Cassidy. Now he has said he want he had two people that he wanted to wrestle. One was Orange Cassidy, and the other one, Brian Danielson. When is that match? When can we see that match? I need because that is exactly the wrestling that I enjoy. Like I, I talk about. Somebody asked me a couple weeks ago, "What what's your style?" Because there's so many things that I like, I don't like, and and plain and simple is Brian Danielson is the style that I enjoy in wrestling. It's not over the top. It's very traditional. It's hard hitting. It's unique in a way that you know you don't really see too often because he he's such a level above everybody else. That goes in the ring, you know, mo most people where it's imp it, it's important to recognize that ability that he has. I, I genuinely love that style. But man, a Shibata and Danielson match. You're not. Ex I don't know how many, you know, what, is it a rating straw? Probably not. But to me and you, I'm sure it's must see TV. Yeah, it, it would be a lot of fun to watch. I have a feeling if they do it, if you do it on New Japan's uh on on their in their world as they would you can do it at new year dash which is thursday the 5th of january so after wrestle kingdom because wrestle kingdom falls on a wednesday and that particular wednesday is washington so in yeah. brian danielson's home hometown basically can't really uh have him not appear on that show instead he'll fly out the next night and do osaka or tokyo wherever it's happening i forget where it is but regardless on new japan property that's one way you do it or you think it should be in japan on AEW, well, I think you can do it in Japan or you can bring it back to the US because Shibata does do the LA Dojo. You can have the match at Revolution because all, you know, all signs seem to point the West Coast for Revolution this year. And that's a pretty cool story to tell. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a great story to tell and I'm looking forward to it tremendously. Uh, very, very cool to see that possibly happen. The other bizarre piece of this, right? And, and you know, Brian, Brian Alvarez, not Brian Danielson. Brian does... Chico Alvarez. He's Chico to me. First thing he said to me, he showed me his Rolex and he goes, call me Chico from now on. True story. Uh, I, you know, he does a prediction show. There were so many things that happened this year, right? Cody leaving AEW early in the year, I would have said, would, would have never been on the list. But all the other crazy stuff that has happened this year, like Vince McMahon getting ousted by his own company for, for uh, you know, uh, miss conduct right i guess i don't know what they're calling it now they've changed what it was multiple times first of all sexual misconduct now it's just misconduct i didn't see that happening uh cm punk losing his mind on a scrum while shoving muffins in his mouth and then getting into a fist fight in the locker room i didn't see that happening i mean but you know what though that can happen it's wrestling but Mike Tyson calling a Shibata match on Rampage of all nights. And Mike Tyson calling moves. Calling, he called an STO. He called the rope break. He called like all these things. And, you know, I'm sure they're feeding stuff to him in his ear. It doesn't matter to me. The fact that Mike was out there and he's calling this match. And, you know, he loves wrestling. You could, uh, obviously, you could see that. This guy loves professional wrestling. He's a huge fan of professional wrestling. I, it was... It was refreshing. It was something so different that I, I very much enjoyed. Yeah. I don't know anybody else that enjoyed it as much. I also, I got to tell you, you know, it was a Friday night. I had a lot of fun that Friday night. So when I was, when I was watching Rampage, I was feeling great. I was having a blast that whole evening. <laughs> I bet it was, it was fine for what it was. You know what? It was just the absurdity of it all. That's yeah, what kind it of is. Made it no, okay. you know what? And 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 I'll tell Tony that too. I, I actually I'm gonna I'm gonna DM, you know, I DM Tony now, random little things. Oh yeah. Congrats oh, the stuff. Jags won. <laughs> Coming up to you know, Thursday. Really enjoyed Iron Mike on commentary, Tony. <laughs> yeah, great. 
<laughs> you know what? I'm going to now, from now on, every Sunday, I'm going to say what I'm going to write to him, and then I'll write it to him afterwards. That's what Perfect. I'm going to do. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought it was it was fun. And, you know, it, it was harmless. And, and to be honest, I enjoyed that. The, seeing Shibata, I enjoyed it so much. Because, like, I, I love wrestling. I enjoyed it so much that nothing that they did after that really could have been bad for me. I yeah. got I got what I needed out of it. We also got Samoa Joe and Wardlow in the main event, defeating the Gates of Agony with Prince Nana. Um, the big story here is Joe and Wardlow having issues. So it seems like that's going to be a match. I don't I'm know where. I don't know what show. Yeah. I don't know if it's a Ring of Honor show. It's an, it's an AEW show. But I, you know what? I think that's a great test for Wardlow to see how he can hang with this dude. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. Also, uh, on AEW Dynamite, we, again, uh, something I did not see happening. We got a Jeff Jarrett, a wild Jeff Jarrett appearance. A wild Slap Nuts appearance on Dynamite. So Jeff Jarrett is the new AEW Director of Business Development. A lot of people are weirded out by this. You know, Jeff has been around the wrestling business for all of eternity at this point. He wrestled in Continental, USWA, right? All of Memphis. WCW, WWE, NWA, TNA, AWA, New Japan, AAA, GCW, Jim Crockett Promotions, and now AEW. This guy has been everywhere. And we got... Just... How many guitars has this man broken? How much talcum powder has he consumed? Because you see those commercials... If you if you if you have you know if you have gotten ill from talcum powder, call us. How many class action lawsuits could he be in? I hear he leads those lawsuits. Just <laughs> he's as a leading silent, them. He's a silent lawsuit uh, purveyor here. You know, I've seen how he does it. He takes like a crate, like twenty four bottles of talcum powder. He just dumps it all in that guitar, and he hopes him. for the best. Oh my hopes god! For the best. Him and New Jack <laughs> hoped for the best. <laughs> Part of his rider. Every week he shows up to the arena. Talcum powder here. Yeah. All right. If yeah. it's not there, he just Two cases he goes of talcum away. powder. But yeah, he's, he's like, you I, know, I'm going to go get some at the store. AW Director of Business Development. Uh, you know, this is a this is an interesting development because the story is that they are looking to do more shows throughout the year. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people imagine they would run more shows. You know, Jeff Jarrett knows buildings for sure. This guy's been around the wrestling business uh, for 30, 40, almost 40 years now. I, I think it's a good acquisition for them on the corporate side of things. Now, whether or not how much that Jeff Jarrett portrays himself on television, I don't know. How much Jeff Jarrett do you want to see on AEW TV? Do you want to see a Kenny Omega and Jeff Jarrett match? Okay, now I do. But in yeah. general, how, do you want to see a John Moxley and Jeff Jarrett for the AEW World Heavy World's Heavyweight Championship match? Yeah, I kind of do. Know, you know what I want? <laughs> you know what I want more than anything? I want what? Jeff Jarrett and his his son Cole Carter to take on the team of Sting and Effie. That's all I want. Oh my gosh! You know, so you know what? Who was? Listen, I know the answer to this, but I've forgotten it since Wednesday. Who was the Who was the Sting impersonator? Cole Carter, the former okay. two dimes from NXT. I had no idea who that was. Uh huh. <laughs> but why did they do it that way? Why didn't they have Jeff Jarrett dressed up as Sting? He does that. that. He a, cosplays as Sting constantly. This has that been is his a question for TK. <laughs> yeah, you know, I want to. You know what? I'm going to tweet him that. I'm going to be like, hey, hey, Tony, listen, Jags won. Congratulations. Great show last week. However, why did you decide <laughs> on, 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 on Jeff not being the the fake sting because he's done it everywhere. How many times has he been a fake sting? I, I endless. It builds intrigue, and it was it was that false. It was that red herring that did it. It was. You know Everyone was so upset. They're like Cole Carter. Who the hell cares? And then Jeff Jarrett. They get the real pop. It worked. It was it was fine. It was actually a lot of fun. Oh boy. I don't know. Uh, we'll see what he does. But I think uh, uh, on the corporate side of things, I think it's a great acquisition. You need people like that in the company. You need people with history and understanding of how the business is and how these venues work and where to go and what to do and timing in certain. You know, I was talking to someone in WWE about this a while back, and they were saying, you know, it's not about booking the building. It's about booking the building at a specific time when other things have not happened in that area. So 
like New, forget it, New York, Chicago, Philly, Boston, you know, th those, you know, those, those prestigious value, you know, venues, cities to go to for wrestling. You could go there at any time. It's fine. You could build tradition and go there every year at the same time. That's also fine. But other venues, smaller markets, B markets, you have to know what's going on in that town. And I was like, give me an example. I go, well, if, you know, if the, the, whatever convention is in town or whatever, you know, uh, uh, event is happening. He, he brought up like the circus. Like he's like, here's a great example. The circus is in town, right? It, traditionally in wrestling. If the circus was in town, you didn't want to run a couple days after the circus. People already exhausted their funds. They went to the circus. They went to go, go they, they spend everything they had. So I, I found it interesting when they were explaining that to me. I'm like, you know what? Jeff would know this. He's, he's a carny dude. <laughs> he's yep. been around forever. Uh, I think it, it's a, I, I think Jeff got too much negativity. I think Jeff had a lot of pressure in TNA and a lot of the misconceptions of him, not not as a wrestler, forget about that, but as as a business guy goes based on that. Uh, but everything I've heard, he's highly, highly recommended for this position. So I hope yeah. he does great. I, I think this is a good move for AEW. It is. And even beyond everything else, I think the best thing that Jeff can bring is is the opportunity to work different venues other than the ones they've been working so far. Absolutely. Wrestling Observer Live going into our last segment here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live final segment here as we wrap up the show here on Sunday. I had a blast with you, Joel Pearl. Oh, the feeling is mutual, Andrew Zarian. I like when we do this. Hey, this is always a, a great time. Uh, you know, a couple other notes here I did not get to on the show. WWE had an earnings call. They made a buttload of money. That is, a, that is an official term. That is what they say in the corporate environment. I'm a corporate guy. I'm a suit and tie guy during the day. This is what we call when we make a lot of money. They generated $305 million in, in Q3, up 19% year over year, which is fantastic. Uh, there was a lot of stuff out of here. One of the things was that Hunter was talking about you know, trying new things and making mistakes and learning from them. I thought that's such a different perspective to have. Isn't it something, Joel? It is. It, it's something that I would rather hear from uh, uh, from someone in business than anyone than anything else. It, if you're only going to rest on your successes, then you'll get stale after a while. And we saw that with WWE for quite a long time. Now they're experimenting here and there. It's going to be a slow process. And if Hunter is going to keep doing that, if Paul Levesque is going to keep trying to uh, to try different things and be okay with failure and learning from them, I'm all for it. Let's try it. Let's throw yeah. things at the wall and throw throw good things at the wall and see if they stick. What do you think they need to do? We got like a minute. Give me like your quick like 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Like what's what's something that you would love to see them do right now? Go oh TV 14 and prove Andrews Arian no. was, was not wrong. Uh, and first of all, the things, the plans change, pal. I get plans it. Change, but it's, plans change, pal. Plans change. It just happens. Uh, no, within you know, 45 what? minutes, plans changed, unfortunately for me. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, <laughs> it's, it's the way it goes sometimes. But I, I, I don't have an answer only because everything that's going on right now, we're seeing little incremental changes. And a lot of that is in depth of talent. Uh, obviously getting some of the injured talent back that they are waiting on is going to be huge. Uh, you know, the Cody Rhodes and um, God, there's so many, there, there are others in the tank, but on top of that, like Absolutely. the Sasha Banks Naomi thing, that's going to be huge. Oh, ah, that's going to be interesting. We're going to find out what's going on with that guys. I had a blast with you guys. Joel, I'm sure I had a blast with you guys. This is always fun doing this on Sundays. Join us back next week. Join us tomorrow with Brian and Mike Sepervivi here on wrestling observer live 3 PM Eastern. For me and Joel, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye for now.